This week on 50 States 50 Dishes, we go all the way to the Green Mountain State of Vermont, birthplace of our 30th President Calvin Coolidge, to make our second dessert in the series a cheddar cheese apple pie. It'll be my first pie that I've ever made completely from scratch, in fact, probably my first pie I've ever made overall. But Vermont, having a population of only 626,000 people, means it's the 49th least populous state. More people live in Detroit, Michigan than live in the entire state of Vermont, so... Statistically, none of them are actually going to watch this, so if I mess it up, they're not going to be around to correct me. So let's go ahead and make ourselves some pie. As I've done before, I've split the ingredients into two lists. So the first is for your cheddar cheese pie crust, and the second is for your apple pie filling. You're going to be making your pie crust first, and that starts with combining two and a half cups of flour, as well as two teaspoons of sugar and a teaspoon of salt. Uh, it's good to put all of those dry ingredients together. You're going to be putting them in either a food processor or, in my case, a, an upright mixer uh, to get them all mixed together to really get the dough for your pie crust. Um, that half cup of shortening that you're also going to add to those dry ingredients, I measured out like you do packed cinnamon. Just kind of put it in there and get yourself a half cup. Uh, next is actually an entire stick of unsalted butter. I broke it up by hand just so I didn't put a whole chunk of butter in with the dry ingredients. I used uh, Cabot Vermont Sharp, a block of cheddar cheese, which I actually hand shredded to make my cup of uh, shredded cheese that's going to go into your pie crust. Hand shredding the cheese is going to be a little bit time consuming, but it's good to have that fresh flavor. As you can see, it is very time consuming, even with sped up time. It took me quite a while to get our cup of shredded cheese. Uh, after that, you do have a few wet ingredients that you're going to put in for the pie crust, namely your teaspoon of apple cider vi vinegar combined with about three to four tablespoons of ice water. Uh, be careful not to pour it out of an actual glass as I did or you're going to end up with water everywhere. Then combine your ingredients in an upright mixer, which I happen to have since I don't have a food processor. The dry ingredients and the shortening are already in there. Then I added the butter, the cheese, and then the cider and water. Once it looks moist, your dough, but isn't a complete ball yet, you're going to want to set yourself up a little bit of plastic wrap. Uh, be sure to dust it with flour as it's designed to be sticky and your dough is already going to be wet and a little sticky as is. So get some flour on there, throw your dough on it, and you're going to want to get it separated out into two discs. Once you've got those discs nice and, and, and put apart, uh, don't make them too wide. You don't need them to be full pie crust size yet. You're going to want to wrap them in plastic wrap and actually refrigerate them um, an hour or overnight. I did overnight. Refrigerating your dough slows down the yeast process uh, so that they don't harden up and it'll allow you to prepare your pie filling. First, you're going to want to peel and core all of your apples and get them diced up into about quarter inch size chunks. Then heat up one of your saucepans using six tablespoons of butter uh, to get that all set up. If your apples are too big and they're not able to all sit on a single layer, you can actually cut them up a little bit smaller as I did here. But you'll find that some of the apples will begin to overcook if you try to do this by hand. I did right down the center of each uh, apple slice to get it to be a little bit smaller, which will allow it to cook faster and release its juices. Um, not shown in the video, I did end up having to use a second saucepan. If you do do that uh, to cook your apples, get them to release their juices, be sure to split up your ingredients across both, as we are going to be adding cinnamon and uh, lemon juice and lemon zest, as well as the nutmeg, while they are cooking on the saucepans. Since I needed lemon juice and lemon zest, I figured I'd just get a lemon and make it fresh. You're able to get the exact amount of lemon juice you need. After you've cooked the pie filling, you're going to want to separate it out onto a baking sheet to let it cool to room temperature and start reworking your dough from the refrigerator. If you're as inexperienced making pies as I am and you have a wonderful wife as I do, as you can see here, she'll be more than happy to help step in and help you out making that pie. You're going to want to get it rolled out as flat as you can. Even if it falls apart as ours did here, you can still get it into the pie plate and just kind of push it together. Uh, it's not pretty, but it does get it to work. If you need extra pie siding, uh, go ahead and pull some of those extra sides off of one side of the pie and put it to the other side so that it's all covered. We're going to be making a two-layer pie crust, so take that second disc, get a nice floured up area, and get it rolled out to be about 8 inches in diameter. Your first one should be about 12 inches or to fit into the pie pan. 
Once you've got your pie crust all rolled out, get your now cool uh, apple filling and go ahead and mound that into the center of the pie crust already in the pie plate. Uh, get yourself a nice bit of flour and go ahead and pick up your 8 inch in diameter second part and place that on top, being sure to cover all of the edges as best you can. If you need to, makeshift, put that dough back together, use a droplet of water if you need it to be tacky. Trim off the extra edges around and crimp down the sides. I use to make it a little decorative, but also to seal it in a fork, as you can see zooming in here, to make that nice pie ridge all the way around. Cut some holes, whether decorative or otherwise, in the top layer to let out the steam, or else your pie is going to explode. Uh, trust me on that one. You're going to preheat your oven to about 425 degrees with a baking sheet inside while prepping your pie up. Last step is to whisk up that egg with a little bit of water and brush it on top to give it a nice golden brown when it cooks. I used a coffee filter as I do not have a brush. Place the pie inside onto the baking sheet. Cook it for about 10 minutes at 425, then lower it to 350 degrees and let it cook for another 50 to 60 minutes or until it's golden brown and crisp on top. I gotta say, of all the recipes I've made thus far in 50 States 50 Dishes, I am the most nervous about this one. This is not only my first um, uh, pie crust from scratch, it's my first pie overall. And so this is a, this is gonna be a tense taste test for me. I'm not really getting the Vermont part, the cheddar flavor, but I gotta say the apple pie part of it, that's a pretty good pie. So I'm gonna rate this as a success. Let's head back to the room and talk about next week. That was Vermont with our cheddar cheese apple pie, our most complicated dish thus far and the second dessert in our series. Next week, though, with Mardi Gras right around the corner, we're going to be going to our first state in the south of Louisiana, and we may even have a guest star. So tune in next week for the Mardi Gras special of 50 States, 50 Dishes, when we head on down to Louisiana.